grace to you, and peace. From God your Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, your Savior, and from the Holy Spirit, who declares to you not only the adoption by God's grace as His children, but also by His marvelous work in your lives, makes you fruitful children forever. Amen. You will know them by their fruits. Jesus gives a very stern warning to His disciples to beware of false prophets. Those who seem to teach the Word of God and yet do not. It connects with our lesson from last week, where we see how God equates our eating of bread with the intake of the stuff that our bodies and souls need to live and to live forever <coughs> with God. This is why it's so vital <coughs> to know what kind of soul food to eat. And that food is nothing other than words which we hear in our ears, process in our minds, and then let sift into the very depths of our souls. This is a stern warning. Because apart from the right eating, we become dead wood. It's how God has given us ample signs in creation to understand how He works. So Jesus effortlessly brings this into a parable involving trees and the bearing of fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. But a good tree can only bear good fruit. As for true prophets of God, so also for the hearers of God's Word. It's all about making sure we take in the right food that we become healthy trees to bear the good fruit according to the will of God. Because this is what God wants, not only for Himself, but for you. That's the marvel of it all. God needs nothing. He wants you. as our last lovely hymn sang. He wants all to come and taste of the fruit of salvation, the good fruit that hangs from the tree of the cross of Jesus. That life-giving tree where we see not death but life. For the one who dies on that tree dies for the sins of the world. And he rises again from the dead to declare that all who believe in him to partake of that word of promise simply believe and you will receive eternal life. It is a fruit above all fruits indeed. The sweetness of knowing that you 
are God's because He wants you to be His. And so He continues to work mightily, marvelously, wondrously to keep you in this faith until you die and go to be with Him in everlasting life forever. That's what He wants. That's the will of God. And that's the first part of doing the will of God. Simply to hear His true word and receive it for the blessing that it is. Can you do that? It's so easy. Because His Holy Spirit engenders within us that belief that faith. He opens our ears, our minds, and our souls to receive this as the true fruit of the tree of life that it is. And then you become what you eat. You become good trees bearing good fruit because God doesn't do it any other way. He doesn't trick you. He doesn't trick anybody. It really is that simple. Believe and receive. And then your life is transformed by God's Holy Word and Holy Spirit in the aftermath of it all. We become those good trees that can only bear good fruit. And what is that good fruit? Again, it's doing the will of God. Continuing to come to His lovely garden here in the village of Tony. It's continuing to look in His book daily where He continues to sow the seed that continues to bear good fruit that you might eat and continue to be filled with His goodness and then let that pour out in your own life. And it's all in simple ways. Jesus concludes the Gospel by pointing to the claims of many of the false prophets who say, we have prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. And Jesus declares that that isn't how it works. Except in very extraordinary cases. But in the vast majority, 99 and 44 one hundredths percent of the time, it's all in the little things of life. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be a miracle worker, a wonder worker in that way that the false prophets would claim. But it's about simply living your lives in the places where God himself has put you. Again, that's according to His will as well. His good and gracious will for you. Because we have all arrived at the place that we are in accord with what God has guided us and directed us to be and to do. He works through us, exercising our own will. Sometimes God acts contrary to our will, especially when Jeff isn't thinking clearly, or hearing clearly, or doing rightly, acting according to His own self-centered will for Himself. But God then directs me as he directs you back to the garden to feast on the fruit of forgiveness.
to hear this word, the word of forgiveness with which our communion service always begins and is always proclaimed from this poem. That he proclaims on every page of this holy book. We are reminded that we are baptized and in that act of God himself, he has declared us to be his children, giving us his Holy Spirit that directs us to call him as Abba, our dear Father, and draws us here to the place where we feast on the fruit of salvation in the flesh and blood of Jesus, right here, present among us, in a true miracle and wonder of God's own working, as we proclaim, Lord, 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 to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for His continuing grace and mercy and love toward us so that we then go out as stately trees of faithful Christians and bear that same kind of fruit, the fruit of love, following His commandments as He lays them out for us as the good way in which He wills His people to live. They become our delight. And this is our life. Not only now, but it also gives us a glimpse into what the heavenly life is like. It's a lot like this, but only much, much better. Free of sin. Free of the threat of death. Free of the peril of hell, because now we will be with God in paradise, with each other, in love, super abundant, and with all of our faithful family members and friends, many of whom have gone before us, many who will be following us still, as God continues to work through His church, His holy will, that we might live according to His grace here in time, and live according to his wondrous life of paradise yonder in eternity. Yes, this is the will of your Father in heaven. Believe it, receive it, and live according to it. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.